Yes, we're back on 67 Hail Hail. I'm Hamish Carton. John Reed's back with me. We're going to chat about Nier Beaton slash Jozo Simunovic in a wee second. Just quickly before we do it, usual plug for the channels. We're at 67 Hail Hail on Twitter. Search Facebook for the same. And if you've not, set, sub, not yet subscribed and clicked the bell, um, please do that. It'd be really appreciated. We do appreciate all the support um, from you guys and girls out there. Yep. Right, is Nier Beaton a viable alternative to Jozo Simunovic? Before we get <laughs> into that conversation, let's just chat about uh, Simunovic because pretty woeful um, all the way back last week uh, against Copenhagen in the second leg. Um, fair to say a lot of fans have turned for probably the final time. You know, that mm -hmm. was a straw that broke the camel's back in terms of him. His, his days should be finished at Celtic. Doesn't seem like you know, Lennon's of that opinion. Where do you come down on Simunovic? Sorry, seeing as he's injured again as well. <laughs> so he is. Well, just briefly, why did Lenny decide to change it last week? I mean, I was so daft playing Ayer at right back and playing Simunovic at centre half. I had so I had recipe for disaster, Roto Era. And I only saw some of the game. But when I, when I heard that Simunovic had made a terrible mistake. I wasn't surprised. And then when I saw the highlights, I thought, oh dear, it's Jojo again. Mm. He's done so many times, and I like him. And in a way, I think that tackle he done on uh, Kenny Mullis are overshadows, like a lot of what he's done. Because <coughs> that, was, that was a good tackle, but people were like, oh, come on, big Jojo, that's what a guy. And I do think he's a decent player, but... I just wouldn't give him a new contract. You know how, like... He's he's got that like one year extension, like that was about a surprise to me. Andrew probably when he came out and said my contract runs at the end of the season, and but then Lenny said, "Oh, we're hoping to get him to sign," but I would hope now that he doesn't. Mm -hmm. But I think he probably will because I think Lenny likes him. Lennon's always had a thing for these, you know, big, tall centre backs who can, you know, header the ball. And you think back right. to some of his signings and his first thing, you know. Dan Mastorovic springs yeah. out to, to mind and players like that. Um, he, Rogni. Uh, exactly. And he, he quite likes Simunovic for me. Just if, if we touch on the Copenhagen game and that mistake, that back pass, the most worrying or concerning thing for me as I was not surprised at all. See when the ball went over <laughs> his so head. Stupid. When the ball went over his head and I saw he's about to pass it back, I knew he was going to do something daft. Um and that's not the kind of player that maybe doesn't get punished domestically but right. when you're playing even not against a top tier European side probably not even a second tier European side right. but you know a team like Copenhagen it still gets punished and a lot went wrong against Copenhagen that was one of the, the main things for me uh, daft mistakes and Simunovic was, was as guilty if not more guilty than anyone else for doing that um, I'm happy to have him round as you know a backup option I think he's a decent defender but he should not be starting European games for us. Obviously, we don't have a European game for a while now, <laughs> so that's not a real concern. But even, you know, big domestic games like cup finals away to Rangers, I would not be too happy with them starting those games. I hope not. Um, so, I mean, that, that leads us on to the, the question we're asking. Is, is Nier Beaton, who played against St. John's and played quite well on the, the right-hand side of the back three, is he, a, you know, a potential alternative to, to Simunovic? I would. I'm not sure because you've got El Hamid as well. Who? El Hamid. Don't know who that is. Well, he's back now. Apparently. <laughs> for how long? Well, they did play together at Ibrox. Beat on El Hamid, which centre was back. centre back pulse, which was a bit odd. I don't know. I think that for the time being, Beat on will probably. If, if we're still doing three at the back, I think Beat on will probably get the nod, and he is a good player. <laughs> But, I don't know, you've always got a feeling with Lenny that he might change it to, like, four at the back again. Like, for the bigger games, like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we play, four, I wouldn't, I play four at the back when we go to Ibrox next week. I hope we don't, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did. I think he might, he might learn his lesson from Copenhagen, and I think he might realise, you know, how much of a difference Lee Griffiths made when he came on. The one thing, we're going massively off topic here, but just one thing quickly, there seems to be a debate, it's either, you know, that four two three one. Or three five two. Mm -hmm. Why not have the both best of both worlds? Four across the back, four in midfield, even a diamond, and have two up top. Why? Why is that not being discussed? Because then you're getting the best of Edward and Griffiths up top, and and you're having a more stable back four. Because for me, 
the the three five two, I like it and it's worked for us domestically, but it's the wing positions it really gets to me because Greg Taylor does nothing on the left hand side for no. me. And it's not really his fault, but he's he's a fullback, he's not a, a left winger or a wing back. And equally James Forrest is nowhere near as good when he's playing as no. part of a five. So that that annoys me. I don't see why he doesn't just go a, a four one two one two or a, even a four flat four four two. Anyway, um near beat on against St Johnson I thought he was pretty good. He's really good in these games against Scottish teams because he's good in possession. Right. He very rarely gives it away and he's a good out ball. The problem for me is his defensive ability against top teams. But again, we've not got... We're not playing a top team until <laughs> next season oh. at the very earliest. No, I mean... He's a sort of... Unfortunately, really, because he's a utility player. And I always think utility players code for no good enough for like any one position. Because he's played midfield, he's played centre-back... I'm not sure. I'm not sure what will happen with him, but yeah, uh, it does do well in these sort of tough games, like somewhere like Petardry or Tynecastle. He's sort of good in the type of games. Mm-hmm. Even Ibrox, mm-hmm. he's good in the type of games where you need to like, get your sleeves rolled up, get stuck, and you wouldn't think that, but he actually does. In a strange way, so uh, this is going to sound mad, and maybe it's because I'm no well, but it sort of reminds me about a Chris uh, Chris Sutton. He's defending. He just gets on with things. Yeah, right. Like I mean, Chris Sutton played the Ibrox centre back. Centre back. Yeah, he won. He just got on weight and they fuss. Breton did the same. It was unlucky. He got, actually got injured at Ibrox and it kept him out for ages. Yeah, it was a hamstring. It was a hamstring. So, I would definitely have him in the team instead of Yozo. And I doubt Yozo will feature much this season, I would hope. Do you think that Breton will play against Livingston? Yeah. I mean, who's our other options? Stephen Welsh? I don't get the him. impression... I mean, he threw him in against Hamilton, to be fair to Lennon, but I don't get the it's impression he's, game, he's... Aye. I don't get the impression he's going to throw him in. Uh, <laughs> I'd be surprised if we see Stephen Welsh again until maybe the league's wrapped up, something aye. like that. I'd, I'd, not that he did badly, I just... I thought surely well. would have seen him. He's not really been on the bench either, has he? You'd have no. thought he would have seen him on the bench at least since the Hamilton game, but he did do well that game, but maybe that, that's just what Lennon does. Maybe, you know, something wasn't quite right about the way he's training. I don't know. I'm just, you know, speculating. Um, but in terms of the summer, I think we definitely need another centre-back. Oh, if, he, aye, if he's going to persist with playing this back three. And people will look at, you know, the name Jack Tucker, the guy that's playing with Gillingham, has been mentioned. And, you know, his, his manager, Steve Evans, who's a big Celtic fan, by the way, has, has come out and said that he'll go for millions and he's rated really highly. I just look at how it's worked with, with Julian, paid seven million, and he is just a brilliant, brilliant defender. He's grown yeah. in every game. Why not just do that again? Why not just look in the French leagues, not even France, look in Italy, look somewhere like that. You know, a player who came in 26, 27 He's not young. He's got experience. He wants to, you know, be part of something, win some trophies. If you need to pay seven, eight million for him, does anyone think that's been one money wasted in Julian? Not a chance. No, it's funny that just this is a tangent, really. When we've spent big money on players, have been a success. Like Julian. And funny uh, that, isn't it? <laughs> Edward, it's when we spend like three million on players. It's the most frustrating thing with Celtic. And Aye. I'm not right. I'm not success. writing off Clamal or anyone like Who? that. <laughs> well, exactly. He's barely been seen, but. <laughs> Players like that, like when we spend like this two to three million, two to three million nowadays is what you know one to one and a half was ten years Aye. ago. It, that's it's kind of moved up, and the seven millions and the eight millions and the nine millions for Edward nowadays are the four millions a few years mm. ago. We need to spend this big money to me to make the team work, and if we're getting this money in for you know the likes of Tierney twenty five million in that, and I know we didn't have Champions League football, but I would much rather we bought two big players a summer at that big price, even one a summer at that big price, than spend, you know, the 10 million on three or four different project type things. It's worked with Julian, it's worked with Edward, and nobody's surprised at all. When we signed Julian, I knew it was a massive signing. When we signed Edward, I knew it was a massive signing. And I'm not the only one. Everyone could have told mm-hmm. you that. Whereas players like, you know, Soro and Clamalla and players in the past, you know, your Amido Baldies and players like that, were always massive, massive risks. So I want to see us doing that this summer. Why not create a partnership for years to come? Um, Julian and another centre back. And I, I, I like Christopher Ayer. He's gone back for me. His Aye. development mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. he's not going the right direction. He's been poor, this, poor for a lot of season now. I think he has. And if you need to be, you know, tough to be kind and you need to get another centre back in to spur him on, then we need to do it. This is, you know, a football club that wants to succeed in Europe. What we've got at the moment is clearly good enough domestically. Of course it is because we've won all these trophies. It's not good enough European-wise because we make too many mistakes at the back 
and what we need to do for me um, is sign another Julian next to him. And if we need to sign one at right back and left back as well, because these players are un unreliable injury wise, then we need to do that as well. Back to uh, Jozo, who we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Do you think he'll get a new contract? I think he probably will, unfortunately. I, I think it's absolutely madness <laughs> if we give him another contract. Because how many games does he play a year? I know, but I think Lennon likes him. Uh, that's look, I mean, that's probably why I picked him. The other day, I wouldn't have picked Jozo against Copenhagen. But I mean, how many injuries <laughs> has he actually had this season? He's out injured again. And I know injuries aren't deliberate players, and I always have sympathy for players who get injuries because they're not doing it deliberately. And if anything, it's more brutal on them than it is the support. Mm -hmm. But, as I say, once again, you know, this is a football club. It's not, you know, under eights. It's not a charity organisation. This is a football club. It's very harsh and old Jozo. He's injured again. Why is he keeping getting contracts if he keeps getting injured? He needs to prove himself to be able to play, you know, 10, 11, 12 games in a row without getting injured. And he can't do it. He hasn't been able to do it for the whole time he's been at the club, basically. Right. He's not going to start now. You need to get rid of him, man. I would hope so, but I think he'll probably still be there because I think the old Lenny boy likes him. But we'll just need to wait and see. I'm just a bit, I'm just a bit, I'm scunnered for the whole thing. And, and I don't mean it be so negative because we're doing so well, but bits like that where recruitment really pisses me off when it comes to stuff like that. We, we you know, we bring in these these players like Simunovic and we keep persisting mistake after mistake. And um, when the, it's not difficult, the proof is in Julian. Go and sign another Julian and your defensive problems will be solved. So you spend money, quality money, and players play well in Europe. They don't make daft mistakes. Agreed. Anyway, right, I'm going to end this before I end up punching <laughs> someone. So uh, thanks, John, once again. Thank appreciate you, your Hamish. time. Um, as we said, 67 Hail Hail, Twitter, Facebook, subscribe, click the bell on YouTube. Um, we're back tomorrow, Friday, that'll be with a wee chat about Mohamed El Yunusi. I'll be getting in my soapbox again, probably oh, talking about that. So you've got that to look forward to. We appreciate all the support, and um, until then, take care.